these are the stories we share around the dinner table, tell in front of the campfire, and listen to on our porch. This is a place where tales are told and stories are heard. Grab your tea, your cocoa, your wild turkey whiskey, your wine. Welcome to season two of the Storyteller's Porch, where we will be hearing tales of the farm with your host and storyteller, Jill Davis. Welcome to the Storyteller's Porch. I'm your host, Jill Davis, and today on the porch is my guest host, Gracie Jenkins. Hi, Gracie. Hello. I'm so glad to be back on the porch today. If you heard Gracie and I on an earlier episode in season two, you know that Gracie is also my daughter, and I'm so glad to hang out with you again today, sweetheart. It's the best. That's one of our motivations for the Storytellers Porch is to connect families and community. And one of our favorite things in our family is to tell stories. And they are the reason, one of the many reasons we created the Storytellers Porch. So welcome to the Porch, Gracie. Tell me about your drink today. So I have on brand with the last time I was on the porch, I had a Dutch Bros Rebel energy drink with me. And it's in my extra fancy new purchase. And it is a reusable cup koozie. So for like large iced drinks from Starbucks or from Dutch Bros, now that I live in Oklahoma and we have a lot of humidity, it keeps my cup from sweating and it makes my drinks way more fun to drink. Remember when you were little and you didn't really understand what coasters were for? And I'm like, that's no. because you've never lived in humidity. That happened when I moved here too. My partner would always be like, why are you not putting a coaster down for your drink? And I was like, I thought they were just for decoration. <laughs> because in Colorado, where you spend the most of your time, we don't have humidity. So we don't have condensation. So the only reason to use a coaster is if you're your mom and I'm always spilling my coffee. So I put the coaster under my coffee sometimes. Yep. And what I'm bringing to the porch today to drink is my fancy new in the middle of the night TikTok purchase that was ridiculous, but it is a water bottle <laughs> with a cozy on it to keep it cool. And I'm going to use it because I bought it in the middle of the night and it might have been a little pricey. We have the last story today that we're going to share on the porch, at least for a while, about Stockport Farm. And I thought it was fitting that you be our guest host today and my co-host, Gracie, because this is a story of both me crying a lot and you coming to the farm and us walking through that. So our last episode was about burning down the barn that had been there for over 130 years and how hard that was for me to watch. And over the last nine months, my partner and I have rehabbed the entire little house, and we have spent so much time in there recreating it. And thanks to Facebook, you got a memory a couple days ago, maybe a week ago, about yeah. where you and I were a year ago. So tell me about where you and I were a year ago. Yeah. So a year ago, I came out to visit you for Mother's Day. And then we took a drive down to the farm after. And one of your Mother's Day gifts was that I helped spend the day cleaning the farmhouse. And it was before really you had done some cleaning work. I know it was intense before I got there, but you hadn't done any of the actually rehabbing of the space. And so it was still pretty pretty messy, very, very dusty and way less a little, a little bugs around the edges. Uh, it's a couple bugs, a couple bits of maybe old food and whatnot. Um, <laughs> we came down and it was the first time I had been at the farm in a long time. Um, and although it was a lot of work, it was a joy to get to be a part of the early stages of kind of reclaiming that space and getting to see the barn and the cows were out on the pasture and we got to go see them and walk through the property. And it was a lot of work, but it was fun. It was really a crazy time when you came out a year ago because yeah. we had just gotten the house, which I didn't think I was going to get for two more years. And I had some college interns coming to stay there. Mm -hmm. And I knew I at least had to get up like all the ick off of it. Yeah. Like when I say ick, I mean, there was old trash in there. We had to clean the sinks because it'd been sitting for a while. And we did that together. And it was also the first weekend that 
the gentleman who puts his cows out on the pasture, mm -hmm. put his cows out on the pasture. So we got to see some little cows. That was really fun. And that was the beginning of the next step of the adventure. And at that time, I had no idea what was going to come. The college interns were going to be there through the summer. I had put in an HVAC system. Mm -hmm. So we had air conditioning and we had heat for the winter. I had scheduled for new windows to come in. And that was all I had done. I think we had some wiring and some plumbing done, but really that was all I had done. So that was last May in 2021. I walked away until September of 2022. Yeah. And at the time, it's a little 1200 square foot house. Like it's little, it's empty. And my partner and I are like, okay, I'm saying I want to go out there for two weeks to paint the whole inside. And he said, you know, I think if I go out with you, we could knock it out in three or four days. I'm like, well, maybe, maybe let's give it a shot. We'll go out for three or four days. Oh my gosh. No, that is not what happened. <laughs> no, not that at all. <laughs> it was nothing like we expected. But there was so much joy in that. And I knew that the barn was gone. And now it's time to rehab this little house. And I have a belief that everything has energy and it tells us what it needs. And whether that's just my imagination or truth doesn't really matter for this story. But in every single room, as we patched the plaster and we painted the walls and we redid wiring, we didn't do it. We hired an electrician and looked at the different things, got rid of the flies, all of that, the house became more and more alive. In January, we took a lot of furniture out there and then we still had a few more jobs to do and a few more things, but we scheduled, you and I scheduled mm -hmm. to celebrate your birthday out at the farm. You had just graduated from college and we have spent a lot of our life, just you and me. Yeah. Even though you have three siblings, you're the youngest, they were gone a lot and you were the littlest and I was a single parent. It was just you and I a lot. So we were missing each other and your birthday was the perfect excuse. It was. To spend together. My birthday was in the middle of the week in April, but my grandmother, your mother's birthday was on April 15th. And so when we were actually at the farm, we got to be out there on her birthday. So although we went out to celebrate my birthday, it was extra special to get to be out there at the same time that other celebrations were happening. That's true. It was grandma's birthday. Sue yeah. Davis. It was her birthday. And she would have been 97 if she were still with us. So she was born 97 years ago Dang. and we were so excited. And the weekend before you came, I went through the house and I put all the finishing touches on it. Mm -hmm. And I put some little gifts by your bed and all the things that a mama does. I left Sunday evening. Yep. Tuesday afternoon, I went out to lunch with a friend. At lunch, I got a text from our cow person, the person who has a the cattle there. And then I got a phone call from the man who leases the cropland mm -hmm. and they both came in within five minutes. And I thought, Oh shoot, I need to check this out. So I picked up the phone and called Clint and he said, Jill, there's a fire at the farm. And that's all he said. And that so I, was on the day of my actual birthday. Cause I remember getting that text message from you being like, just so you know, there was a fire at the farm and just being like, oh my God, like what happened? And because you specifically and I are from Colorado Springs, mm -hmm. you were here as a young girl when the Waldo Canyon fire came through. Yep. You were evacuated during that fire. A strong memory for me. I don't remember how many houses were destroyed, but it was a really strange fire in the sense that it came down the hill rather than yeah. going up the hill. And your home with your dad was right in the wake of that fire. Like yeah. It was right in the path of the fire. All of my friends' homes were in that neighborhood. And I had quite a few friends who lost their home during that fire. So it was a huge impact on my world. I, at the time, was out of town. So it impacted a lot of people around me. But I wasn't in the midst of the fire. But wildfire is a trigger for both of us. Yep. Because we know the devastation it can do. And this was a day that out on the plains of Kansas, the winds were gusting up to 70 miles an hour. It is just as dry as dry can be out there. And when I got the call that there was a fire on my property, all I could think about was all that work is gone. Yeah. 
it was hard. I called my partner who's been working with me on the house and I cried to him and he thought, oh no, oh no, oh no. And I was just sobbing because I was sure the buildings were gonna go down. Yeah. And although the buildings are worth more from insurance than they are standing <laughs> financially, <laughs> <laughs> from an emotional sense you had spent so much time putting and i mean just effort like truly putting your heart back into that home and making it a home again not just a house and i think that would have been an irreplaceable loss i think it would have been so my heart goes out to all those people who have lost their homes yeah. and have been through a fire and you know this, your grandparents on your dad's side lost their home to a fire. Yep. I was young, Gracie, when that happened. I was probably around your age. I was in my early 20s yep. when they lost that house. And ever since then, I've always been a little less attached to my things. Yeah. Because I always knew they could disappear in a moment and relationships are what matter. Yeah. But when I heard about the fire at my house, I thought, Nope, screw that. That <laughs> house matters because it involves relationships. Yeah. So this is how the fire was discovered. Clint's farmland is around where my farmland is. And the man who helps him with the farms lives just a couple miles from our farmhouse, from Stockport Farm. He happened to see the flames. He called the fire department immediately. All of it is volunteer fire department. It's the Cheyenne County Fire Department, the Bird City Fire Department, and the St. Francis Fire Department, all volunteer. And they were there within 10 minutes. That's just crazy. That amount of community collaboration and how quickly everyone moved into action was just really astounding for me when you told me that. Mm -hmm. It amazes me. Yeah. How quickly it was taken care of. Now the fire did burn most of the day yeah. and it took out a couple acres and it came within about 20 feet. And that's a stretch of the propane tank. It yeah. came right up to the sidewalk. I would say that it was, I wonder if we can share the picture on one of our social medias when this episode comes out. So go and check that out. But we have a picture of the, when I came out and visited of the, the scorch mark on the ground in comparison to the propane tank. Now my sense of mental distance is not the best, but I would say it was closer to 10 feet away from the propane tank. It was right up against it. I just don't know how it didn't get any closer. I don't either. And the few people I've shown that picture to as well have been like blown away by the fact that it did not reach the propane tank. And on the front yard, it came within feet of the front sidewalk as well. And a big dry tree. And because this house has sat for so long without a lot of attention to it, the trees are dry, the grass is dry, mm. and it's that kind of year. So it was just yeah. fire tender. That's one of the things that happened. And so I'm so grateful. I will post all those pictures, Gracie. Thank you. They'll be on our social medias for sure on our website. I'll include pictures of the firefighters. So shout out to the Cheyenne County firefighters. I appreciate yeah. you so much, caring so much for that farm and caring enough to get out there to take care of it. And here's the amazing news. None of the crops were damaged either. It was just right on the edge of the crops and nothing was damaged. When you came to see me that day, I got there the day ahead mm -hmm. and then you came and I walked the property line where the trees were and I just cried. I couldn't stop crying because I felt like I had worked so hard and then it was just gone. And so, But it wasn't gone. It just felt like it was gone. And as I walked along, and I'll also post this, for those of you who don't know, your storyteller porch host is a little woo-woo. Not like triple woo, but like woo and a half woo. <laughs> And as I walked along this absolutely decimated dust where everything smells and the dust from the fire, it's like walking through a campfire for an acre and a half yeah. is coming up and billowing. And I'm coming to the end of the, the tree line and I look down and Gracie, and I'll have a picture of this. There is a red hawk feather tucked inside a branch 
And I truly believe that was a message from the universe saying it will be okay. Yeah, I think so too. And when you came out, I'm going to prompt you a bit on this because I want our listeners to know what I said to you. (laughs) You said to me something about the Native American cultures, our indigenous cultures, and what they use fire for in agriculture. Yes. So I do not know as much as our indigenous community members do, of course, but from the bit of conversation I have been able to have with community members, as well as some study I did in college on sustainable farming methods. One of the things that we talked about a lot is that it in indigenous cultures here in the States and in many other parts of the world, it is a very routine process of farming and of planting to have controlled burns and to have regularly scheduled burns where you burn out a lot of the growth that you've had thus far, because that actually makes the soil richer and gives it a place to start over in. And it's in the long run, although it might take a hit to your pocket, if you're selling the crops in the long run, it actually leaves the land a lot more sustainable and gives it a longer life. You told me that. Yeah. Your mama rolled her eyes internally. (laughs) <laughs> not externally, <laughs> but I rolled my eyes and I thought there is no way anything will ever grow on this ground again. Mm-hmm. So we spent the weekend, just a very sweet weekend, celebrating your birthday, celebrating my mother, your grandmother. We went to Big Ed's in Burt City. It was so fun. Great drinks. Yep. Wonderful <laughs> service. They brought my drink out in a little happy birthday cup when they heard it was my birthday. And it was just, it was really, really sweet. And it was just a very sweet weekend. You went back to your home. I went back to my home and I thought, okay, here we go again. I'm going to go back out there next weekend, do some of the work that has to be done. Mm-hmm. And I'll try not to look at the trees. Do you know what happened? I got out there and there was already green grass growing where the burn was. It just took my breath away because nature is so amazing. And it's so resilient. And I think that's another like core theme and something that I think a lot of people before us knew probably a little bit clearer than we might know today is that the burn does increase the resiliency of nature and of the world. And that it sometimes takes what can be a really painful and really hot and really uncomfortable clearing in order for things to start anew again. They always come back and start again. I know you didn't mean to do that, but you did it. You did the thing, sweetie. The thing. <laughs> because as humans, we do make meaning out of things. Like you yeah. talked about the land and mm-hmm. that the burning away creates resiliency and brings in new growth. And that is really my message that I took away from this very personal story. Before we go there, I want to share with our listeners, this is going to be my last Stockport Farm episode for a while. We may have one down the road, but for now, it's time to tell other people's stories. So in the next several episodes, we have the story of one of my friends who's younger than I am, who grew up on a farm in South Dakota in the 70s. She did not have indoor plumbing. Take that in. Pretty crazy. (laughs) Another story of a beautiful woman and her daughter who live in the Cheyenne County area. She is over a hundred and she's going to be sharing some stories with her. Another episode where I talked to a friend of mine who happens to be a local dentist who somehow grew up on a goat ranch and ended up in Colorado Springs as a dentist. Don't want to give away too much. But this is our last story about Stockport Farm. We will be starting a page specifically focused on Stockport Farm, its history and its future. If you want to go check it out, it's going to be a Facebook page. It'll be an open page. We'll put the links out there for you so you can find it. It will be ongoing. But for me, the burning of the tree line, the burning of the barn, and the things that are coming anew are where I want to end my story of Stockport Farm for now. 
on the storyteller's porch because there's so many other interesting stories out there that have nothing to do with Stockport Farm. And I want everyone to get to hear some of those too. So as we close out, Gracie, of our time on our porch, our stories that we share here on the porch are personal, very personal right now, with collective impact. Would you like to share the collective impact that you feel from this story? You, you summarized it a bit, but give it to me in just a sentence or two, if you don't mind. I think that the collective impact from this story can be summed up in the reminder that sometimes in order for us to fully step into spring, to fully step into new growth and the beauty of a fresh start, we have to be willing to sit with the difficult burn process and to allow nature to clear out what is dead and no longer fruitful for us in order to have sustainable harvests and to have sustainable growth and change and development, both in nature, in our own lives, and in our society as a whole and where we're going next. Gracie, we are in some challenging times in our world here in the United States and still in a pandemic, although it's starting to move out a little bit. We're starting to learn how to cope with it is really what we're doing. We are in the midst of so many changes, and I can only imagine for your generation, how hard that must be because you don't have the history yet of the hope and you haven't experienced as much of the resilience that we need to keep going. I sometimes think you've actually experienced more because it's more condensed. I think too, we haven't lived as much of it, but I think that's when it comes down to our generation finds it where we can. And I know for me, one of the places I find it is in nature. And so it's like, even if I haven't seen as much of that hope and resiliency in humanity, I can look to the seasons and I can look to the controlled burns and the growth that comes up a week later and use that as a reminder that nature and the seasons and those cycles have been here long before we have and will be here long after. And I think that's really all the hope that I need. I want to add to that, but I don't think there's much to add to that. Gracie Jenkins, thank you for being here on the porch with me today. You can, of course, learn more about Gracie through our show notes and what she does out in the world as she brings hope, because she does, to other people. Here at the Storyteller's Porch, we believe we are the stories we share. Keep living your story and meet us next time here on the porch. And be sure to bring your favorite drink. To learn more about this season's storytellers and to catch past episodes of The Storyteller's Porch, visit us at thestorytellersporch.com. To make sure you hear every exciting episode with Jill this season, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever you hear your favorite shows. We'll see you next time here on the porch at the farm where I'll be drinking iced coffee and occasionally some wild turkey whiskey. What drink will you bring?